The EKIP from Russian, Ecology and Progress, was a visionary Soviet and later Russian aircraft project developed during the 1980s. It was spearheaded by Professor Lev Nikolaevich Shukin, a renowned aerospace engineer who had also contributed to the Soviet Buran space shuttle program. Unlike conventional aircraft, the EKIP featured a highly unconventional lenticular or elliptical design, often described as a flying saucer, tarielka in Russian. It had no wings or tail, instead using a thick, disc-shaped fuselage that served both as a body and lifting surface. This innovative shape allowed lift to be generated across the entire structure, improving aerodynamic efficiency, increasing internal volume, and significantly reducing fuel consumption. The EKIP was engineered for short takeoff and landing operations without the need for traditional runways. It could operate from water, snow, marshlands, rough terrain, or short unpaved strips. Instead of conventional landing gear, the aircraft used an air cushion system powered by auxiliary turboshaft engines. This system created a compressed layer of air beneath the fuselage, allowing for smooth landings and low-speed taxiing, much like a hovercraft. A cornerstone of the EKIP's aerodynamic performance was its boundary layer control system. The aircraft was embedded with a network of air channels, slots, and fans that managed airflow over its surface by sucking in or ejecting air. This significantly reduced drag, enhanced lift, and improved overall flight stability, enabling the EKIP to carry heavy loads with the potential for vertical or extremely short takeoffs and landings. The EKIP's power came from a dual engine configuration, turbofan engines for thrust and separate engines dedicated to the air cushion and boundary layer control systems. It was designed to cruise at speeds up to 700 kilometers per hour, 430 miles per hour, reach altitudes of 13,000 meters, 42,000 feet, and land at speeds as low as 95 kilometers per hour, 59 miles per hour. Even in the event of engine failure, the aircraft could glide safely at a descent rate of 3 meters per second, 11 kilometers per hour, with the ability to land on uneven terrain or water surfaces. Initial development began with unmanned scale models in the late 1980s, followed by piloted versions such as the 12-meter-long prototype tested in the early 1990s. These early flights demonstrated the aircraft's stability, maneuverability, and soft landing capability. However, the program encountered technical setbacks, including several prototype crashes and persistent funding issues. The collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 dealt a severe blow to the EKIP project, although a government grant of 1.2 billion rubles was issued in 1993, rampant hyperinflation rendered it nearly worthless. Despite interest from the Russian military and forestry sectors, as well as subsequent attempts by the EKIP Corporation to secure international partnerships, progress slowed. In the early 2000s, American investors and even the United States Navy showed interest, particularly in using the EKIP for military logistics, surveillance, and even firefighting roles. The aircraft's innovative vortex control and stall capabilities also attracted attention from European researchers, including studies under the Vortex Cell 2050 program. However, no production ever commenced, largely due to financial, bureaucratic, and political challenges. Following Professor Shukin's death in 2001, the project gradually faded. The final prototype, the L-23, is currently displayed at a military museum near Moscow. Although the EKIP was never mass-produced, it remains a remarkable example of aerospace innovation. Its forward-thinking design, blending advanced aerodynamics, fuel efficiency, and extreme operational versatility, prefigured many elements seen in today's vertical takeoff and landing and hybrid aircraft. Today, the EKIP stands as a symbol of unrealized potential, a bold vision in aviation history that was ultimately sidelined by economic turmoil and political instability. Nevertheless, its pioneering concepts continue to influence modern aerospace engineering and inspire future aircraft development.